Hello, I'm Janet Carl, a consultant with the Iowa Parent Educator Connection Project. Each of the women you will hear from today in this informal dialogue has grown up as the sister of a person with disabilities. They will share with you their perceptions of what that experience has meant for them, uh, what they've learned about themselves and other people, and any advice they care to pass along. We hope that this discussion will serve as a springboard for further conversation on the topic among parents, educators, and other brothers and sisters with the same opportunities and challenges before them. Our panelists today include Allison Sampson, a junior at Nevada High School, Terry Stokes, a senior at Valley High School in West Des Moines, Sharla Utsi, a speech-language pathologist for AEA-6, and Terry Fritz, a special education teacher at Pleasant Hill School in Marshalltown. Let's start with uh, a question about what life was like or is like um, at home with this brother or sister with a special need. Were there special responsibilities you had or have? Uh, were those things that you just knew to naturally pick up or did uh, somebody have to ask you to be especially involved with that brother or sister? Terry, would you begin? Um, I'll start off with telling about my brother, Mike. He's the oldest. Um, he's 26 years old and is living in Des Moines with my folks right now. Folks are thinking about group home situation, but um, he works for ARP, so he rides the MTA bus, which I won't even do. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so he's ambulatory. He does not have physical handicaps. He has a mental disability, and teachers classified him as a trainable mental retardation. He um, cannot really read or write all that well. He's learned his name because he's had to sign it on papers and such. Um, and I, I always had fun doing that with him. I guess when you speak of responsibilities, I don't call it responsibility so much. Um, my brothers had to learn to do things, and I've known this. I knew when I was a little kid, I helped him out with a lot of things. Like, Dad told us to go clean the room. Oh, got to go help Mike. Does he know how to run the vacuum cleaner? And I tend to help him out. And uh, my brother got a little lazy there. It depended on us for a little bit. But as I said, I don't see it as responsibility. He's just part of the family. And we just, you got to teach him. He's got to know how to do these things. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, I should talk a little bit about my brother, who is the youngest of five in the family. His name is Lawrence, and Lawrence has Down syndrome. He's 38 years old, so um, when you're talking about responsibilities growing back, uh, that's looking back a long time. I really don't recall any major responsibilities. Lawrence was just a member of the family, and, and if there were added responsibilities, I don't ever remember thinking of them as responsibilities. Um, Occasionally it was taking Lawrence into town because he loved to, to go places. That, that, that was probably what we would have done with anybody, um, younger member of the family. Took him to more, a movie because yeah. it would be a good movie. Yeah, something like, like that. <laughs> but you would have done that anyway, I think. More, more of an opportunity, I think, than anything else is to, to grow and learn about, meet other people. It was, just part of the family. Okay, thanks. Well, I had an older sister, and her name was Sherry, and she recently passed away. It was about six months ago, and she had Batten's disease, and it's very rare. It's genetic, and um, she slowly deteriorated. She, it was a neurological disorder, and the way I always remembered her was she was five years older than me, and so when I remember her, she was blind, and then a few years later she couldn't walk, and then she slowly lost her mental abilities. And uh, I, I didn't have any assigned responsibilities. It was, I wanted to help her, because she was my sister, and I loved her a lot, and um, I had a lot of special things to do with her. It was almost like having a younger sister than an older sister. Um, since she was in a wheelchair, 
I had to help my parents lift her and move her. And there were times, uh, the last few years, I'd help feed her and uh, entertain her, you know. You know, maybe since she couldn't see, you know, if we went to a movie, we'd have to sit right next to her and tell her what was going on. But I didn't mind. It wasn't a responsibility. It was just helping her out. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, my brother has several palsy, and he's 21. And after he graduated, he moved out, and he's living on his own now. I'm very proud of him. Because, you know, we always thought that he'd never make it because Rick could, would get lazy also <laughs> with the, you know, you treat him as the handicapped person and he'll, he'll, he can act it to the hilt. <laughs> but um, he, as far as responsibilities, um, I didn't find it, I didn't figure it as a responsibility. I just did it. And um, we'd do things together. And um, he was in a wheelchair also. And so, you know, as far as opening doors or going to the mall and trying not to run over anyone's heels and um, <laughs> lifting him, um, I didn't do much of that towards the end. But when I was younger, I can remember when we were a lot younger, he was, his room was upstairs. And then it finally moved downstairs. But on Saturday mornings when mom and dad had gone to work or mom was still in bed or something and I used to we'd literally help Rick down the stairs by just literally dragging him down the steps <laughs> but we thought that was great but you know so you always had to help him along but we always did things in pairs and he was five years older than I was also so there was an age difference and you did kind of treat him as the younger one because you you did have to help him a little more but you want them to experience the same thing Think, as you. Yeah. You want them to have the same fun, do the sports, go to the movies, get out and talk, because they need that. Just, you just want them to be part of <laughs> Yeah, but then they always were there to listen to you yeah. gripe mm -hmm. and moan. Yeah. And they never, he never really ever complained about anything. Yeah. Well, Allison, have your, would you say that your family relationships have been affected by your brother's disabilities? Yeah, we had to be closer and stronger at times when he was going through surgery, you know, or he was um, so, you know, we were closer and than other families, I suppose. I, I know my family is, I'm very proud of my family and I feel like I have the best family that there is. And I, it isn't any better than any of my friends who have normal brothers and sisters. And I feel very close to my parents because they always included me in every decision and I always knew exactly what was going on. It mm -hmm. kind of helped me grow up a lot quicker mm -hmm. than yeah. other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I would respond as well that I was always very proud of my family. Uh, my brother is I mentioned is 38 years old, and so we're talking about a, a time in Iowa's history where they they weren't always kept at home. And I know that at the time he was born, the recommendations were to to institutionalize him. And I was so proud of my family, and always have been that that he stayed at home with us, and and also proud of friends and neighbors and that are so good, and still are. You meet some wonderful people. Um. But I was thinking when you said institutions, my that's the first thing, you know, 26 years ago, that's what it's told mm -hmm. to you know, my parents told me, that, oh, your son, mm -hmm. well, put him in an institution, he'll never be able to walk, never be able to do this or that. And to hear my mom talk, and how she's, my mom and dad just still, they can remember things back to his birth and still gleam about, my mom, oh, you want to bet? He'll walk. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> and she got him walk in, and we're not going to put him in an institution. And now he's capable of doing so much right oh, now. Yeah. So I've gotten, my parents have always, they've kept me, always let me know things, and I always talked to them about things. I always wanted to be knowing about my brother, always. It was, it was like, I was a great joy. It was like, look at me, everybody. <laughs> it sounds like it's been a strengthening experience for your families. It's not been so stressful that it was a, a negative experience in any way, do you mm -hmm. think? 
Well, probably the only stressful part was when they are sick and they are in the hospital. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, but that's stressful to any family. Right. Sometimes decision making is hard. Decision making regarding um, what to do as they get older. I know that was very difficult for my mother when she first had to make the decision to place my brother in a in a different setting. Um, it was hard for her to give him up mm -hmm. <laughs> more than anything. And, mm -hmm. it was, and she consulted with all of us to, to get our opinions. And I think finally she, she made the decision because it was better for him. Uh, you almost feel than, like the parent. Mm -hmm. You feel like the parent along with your parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how about your social lives? Um, did having a, a brother or sister with a disability hinder your social life in any way, Terry? I know it definitely brought in mine. Um, I know with my friends, when I had met a new person, they'd have to come into the house and meet Sherry, and if they did not accept Sherry, I would not accept them. So it was almost like I have very close friends, very good, understanding, caring friends, because they accept my sister. And um, I've met so many people through my sister. You know, people who worked with her in her school, people that just stop, like you go to a restaurant and they stop to ask. You know, the curiosity meets so many people through natural curiosity. And I just, they're all wonderful people and I've, I've never been made fun of because of my sister. Huh. No one ever made fun of her because they knew she was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Allison, how about you? Um, Rick, I, well, he was older than me, and he went through the Nevada High School. He didn't have to go to a special school or anything, although my mom had to do a lot of fighting for that. And um, so, but I was always known as Rick Sampson's sister. I was never known as Allison Sampson, and you know, because everyone thought he was a special person. So I guess, you know, he kind of opened a lot of the doors there. And, um, but my friends, I think my friends are closer. I've got some of the best friends simply because they can't accept Rick. And, you know, if they didn't, then they, they just never would become close friends. So he, it was a special thing there. And, um, just he he always looked at the brighter side and he always found the right way or he just never complained and stuff so he made kind of made me see things through different eyes than other people would I think so you know you kind of recommend getting a friend with a handicapped <laughs> brother or sister in it so it's special it really is Social. My brother's a very social kind of guy, uh, and I couldn't help but learn a lot of things from him. He's a very outgoing person, loves to talk and say hi to everybody, and it's odd. I'll go home now, and, <laughs> and people walk by the street, Mike will say, hey, or if we're down out in the mall or something, hey, Mike, how you doing? And oh, who is that, Mike? <laughs> oh, just a friend from him that I met, or people on the bus, that's funny, the bus drivers. He has to cross a street to get onto the bus, and the bus drivers will wait for him. They know it's my brother, my here he comes, <laughs> catch up. And so there's a lot of regulars that he meets, and he's just made me be that much more open with my friends and such. And uh, it's like them. If Mike pretty much, he acted like he always knew my friends, and it was kind of neat. It's always he was never shy about wanting to talk with them. So it kind of made it easier for my friends. I would never warn my friend, so to speak, oh, my brother has a handicapped or he, <laughs> he might be rude or curious like burping. Or, <laughs> you know, nothing like that. He's just like any other brother. He might do that. They just come into the house, and I meet my brother, and my Mike, my brother Mike just broke the ice for me and such. So. <laughs> I think everybody has expressed pretty much the way it was for me. Um, friends were friends if they accepted my brother and I don't recall ever warning people about my brother either you know they they but I grew up in a real small community where everybody knew of Lawrence and as I grew older and moved away from home we I'd occasionally talk about him but um, um, 
probably broadened experiences, made me more tolerant of people and more acceptant, show more acceptance of people's differences, and I think that's a real positive thing. Have there been financial effects on you or your education because of the financial drain related to your, <coughs> your brother or sister's disability? Terry, do you have that experience? Um, I know that since my sister has died that we don't have the medical expenses anymore and I, I never felt deprived. I had everything I needed and everything I wanted but now that we don't have those extra expenses <coughs> it's my parents are so carefree and they want to go out to dinner all the time and you know I can I can go to any college I want there's no you know I I want a scholarship but there's no pressure anymore that I have to have one and it's it's relieved a lot of stress because even though I shouldn't have worried I, I did worry about money okay how about uh, equal treatment at home were, were there times when you were growing up that you felt that your parents were maybe a little harder on you than they were on your brother or sister Allison do you remember any um, experiences? Sometimes um, as far as helping Rick from here to there or getting things for Rick because he couldn't reach so high or whatnot, you know it was there and you know but if mom and dad weren't around you'd come back and you'd just say get it yourself you know and <laughs> yeah. it was the sister torment if you're not nice you know and then he'd run me over and so I'd get it so it <laughs> never really mattered anyway but um, my parents were always really fair you know, it was more, I felt like, you know, I wanted to help him or, you know, it was me doing the extra or whatnot. But um, they always tried to be really fair. And in some of those things, you just couldn't be because they would you know, if I had to do something for Rick, if they were going to go out and they wanted me to stay with him, you know, because he does need a little extra help, but not a lot. But then they'd give me my time where, you know, they'd say, okay, you know, go on out. You know, this is your time. But it was nothing I ever considered. It'd just be as if I had a younger brother and had to stay home and babysit. So, but they were always really fair in their decisions and making sure that I had my time. And, but I never considered it like I had to sit there and stay with them because we always had fun. We'd screw around. Mom and Dad are gone, you know, you take advantage <laughs> of the house anyway. So, okay. Um, Never felt demands. I was going to say, it's something I always wanted to do. It's like my parents needed a break. And I was always intrigued. It intrigues me to this day about my brother and just the just people in general intrigue me. I never felt demand and I wanted to give my mom and dad a break. I wanted them to go out and I thought, it was fun to do this. I said, they need to get out too. They let me have these things, and why can't I give a little bit back? I don't recall any major responsibilities, duties, or, or even any difference in treatment. My parents, um, we grew up in a farm, and it was a dairy farm, so they were tied to home anyway. <laughs> so there was never any problem with my having to sit with him. Um, the only th difference I can recall Mom saying was, why can't you all be like Lawrence? He was so neat and meticulous, and mm. he was such a... And so she always would, more of a teasing vein than anything else, uh, mm -hmm. why can't you all be as neat as he is? <laughs> <laughs> My brother wasn't neat. <laughs> <laughs> very meticulous, wants oh. things very oided, and that's, that's neat. He would be a great house cleaner. Uh -huh. I know um, in my situation, my parents didn't treat me any differently. I know my, my mother was always concerned that I wasn't getting enough attention <laughs> and I never felt that way and I, I know that I was a lot harder on myself than my parents ever were. I put a lot of pressure on myself to be the best and you know I wanted to do the best so I wouldn't cause my parents any more problems because they had so much to worry about, so much to think about with Sherry. I didn't want them to have to think about me. So I was, I was always very hard on myself because, and I mean, I have, I mean, I have legs I can run with and 
I have a mind I can use, so I'm going to take advantage of all those opportunities that I have because I'm very lucky. Exactly. Well, when you think about your brother's or sister's future, um, what role do you see yourself playing in that future? Um, future plans about where he or she may live and, and what role you may have with that? Sharla? I guess for me the future is here. <laughs> um, I have a few years ago at um, recommendations of the, the group home and the people that operate that, they made the recommendation to my mother that she set up a co-guardian so that that person could begin to assume some of the responsibilities and she was getting elderly. So um, she consulted with all of us. I kind of hoped that she would ask me. I always wanted to assume the responsibility of, of looking after Lawrence. And it maybe goes along with what uh, Terry said. You, you become harder on yourself. And I, and I don't think it's harder. I just wanted to, to help out as much as I could with Lawrence. So I became co-guardian. Uh, she asked uh, my other sister and brothers um, as well. They, I think I helped one <laughs> or accepted the responsibility. And my mother has since uh, died within the last year and a half, and I am his sole guardian. So I function as signing the papers that he uh, needs to go have take things that, of that sort that he needs to have taken care of. He comes to our house, considered our house is his home now. He has his room or his office, as he calls it, where he has his things that uh, he took from, a, from home. And I, he comes to our place for vacations unless um, my brothers or sister um, want him to come there. And I think it's kept the time, ties between us a little bit stronger. We have to coordinate plans a little bit tighter and uh, then we might um, have otherwise. So vacations tie in a little bit with well, where Lawrence is going to be and what he's, his needs are. So we keep closer in that sense. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I have a number of different <laughs> feelings. I'm scared, I'm anxious, I wonder what's going to happen. I, 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 don't know, I can't remember when I wasn't thinking about it. I've discussed with my parents that I want to be the guardian if something should happen to them. And they're talking, you know, group home situation too, but, you know, the years wait for mm -hmm. someone to get in. <laughs> you know, they have them on a list, but, mm -hmm. and then to get him in, and I wonder, oh, he can't really manage his money. He can't this or that. Now, how much more can he learn? How much more can I help out with this? I'm just scared. Um, will he be living with me? Will he be in a group home? Will he like it in the group home? <laughs> Will he feel like we're leaving him? That type of thing. I just I try and think about how he feels about situations, how I would feel, and just try when I go home to keep reassuring him. I just I don't know. It's a scared feeling to wonder what our own future is going to be like, and then you have to worry about another person possibly. <laughs> when you think about in in your cases. Uh what you might do after you finish your education, or in the ca in your cases, Terry and Charlotte, what you are doing now, <coughs> do you think that your choice of vocation has been in or will be influenced by um, having grown up in a home with a person with a disability? Mine, I I pretty much have to say, uh, heavily probably influenced by my brother. I've always been around the schools, the special ed schools. As I'm an ex Air Force brat, so I've been overseas and in different states and such, so I've been open up to many school situations. I've always volunteered to do stuff. In the summer when I was a little girl, I'd help out with all the kids. My brother's part of this youth thing, and oh, let's go help out, and I always wanted to do that. I've been wanting to be a special ed teacher. I never changed my mind once since third grade. <laughs> and I was, I was straight ahead from there, and this is what I wanted. And I always had that chance. I was lucky. The teachers knew I was genuine in my feelings, and they would let me do things like lead a little calendar group. I remember letting them, letting them me do that, and it was it was fun. And, and as I said earlier, I was intrigued, and my passion grows more and more every day. And I always want to know more. <laughs> 
I, yes, it did have influence. I can't say I even knew what a speech pathologist was when I first chose this as my uh, career. Um, but I knew I wanted to do to work with special people in some way or another. But I also knew I didn't want to get that closely involved. I didn't think I was emotionally ready or capable of doing that. So I heard someone talking about this field, and I thought, aha, that sounds just just what I need. And, and, it, and I think it has worked out very nicely. I enjoy it, and I probably was drawn to a field because of my brother. Terry, when you think about life in the future uh, oh. and a vocation, what do you think about it? Um, I'd like to go into education, not necessarily special education, but I know that my sister has influenced me to um, be a very caring, loving person, and I want to help everyone as much as I can. And I like to go into education because I love to learn. I have this mind, and I want to use it. Allison? Um, Rick has really affected me in that he makes you, he, he's had these opportunities, but he just hasn't been able to take full advantage of them or whatnot, so it, he makes you want to strive to be the best, but he's made me a people person, I suppose. Therefore, I'm, I want to go into business, which, not education, I, just simply because it's just not my my thing, so, but he's in, um, the influence has been on people, being a people person and, and working hard for it and just not always sitting back and letting the next guy do it. We have time for one last question. And this is your chance to say anything that you haven't gotten to say so far. Is there something that you think that parents and educators in particular ought to know about what it's like to be uh, the sister in all of your cases? of a person with disabilities. Terry? People always say to you, your brother's so special. Um, yeah, my brother's special. Not because he's mentally retarded, but because he's my brother. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, I sum it up that way. Okay. I guess um, I would urge them to, to, to not assume that uh, because you have a, a brother or sister with a disability that it's going to be a problem in the family. Many yeah. times it's such an opportunity and such a plus in your family. And um, always remember that there is family out there to, to be considerate of and remember, but don't assume they've got a big problem. Mm -hmm. I guess everyone should realize that we're all normal people. To us, our families are normal. Yeah. Yep. They're, I've never known anything different than having my sister around in the way she is, or she was. And um, I just want the parents and educators to be aware that, to ask us questions. If they're wondering about anything, about our feelings, about our certain cases, to just ask us, because I think we're all very comfortable talking about our brothers and sisters. It was the normal family setting for me also. And I, you know, when Rick did move out, you know, it was like more like he was leaving me than I was, le you know, that he was leaving the family. It was just a normal thing. And um, if anything, it made you, it's made me a stronger, more caring person than anything. So he's just, I wouldn't have had it any other way had I, you know, I wouldn't have. I've never said, you know, I wish I had a normal brother that could do normal things because everything he does is normal to me. Thanks. Thanks for your participation today. I've been impressed by how positive and strong you all seem. You know, this is a situation for people who aren't in it that seems pretty scary and it seems hard to think about growing up with a person with a disability, but you've made it seem not only possible, but uh, to be an advantage in many ways. Thank you. Our panelists today have been Allison Sampson, Terry Stokes, Sharla Yutzi, and Terry Fritz. I'm Janet Carl. Thanks for watching on behalf of the Iowa Parent Educator Connection Project.